This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL, everyone. We're so grateful you're here. How is everybody doing well? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm better now that I'm off mute. Oh, oh there you go. Oh, yeah. I figure, why not turn my mic on today, see what happens. <laughs> hey, or not, whatever. <laughs> we can just lip read as well. All right, well, we do have to get to this because with more than one million cases, one million reported in one day, COVID numbers are at an all-time high. And of course, Dr. Coley is here to help us spread facts, not fear. Dr. Coley, where are you at? There you are. How are you, my love? Hey, Doc. Hi, guys. I'm so, I'm sorry that we're back to being remote, but I'm so glad that we're being safe. I am as, as well. I just want to ask you, what should we be doing differently to keep ourselves safe in this, like, third act or fourth act of where, wherever we are? Well, you know, Tori, a lot of medical experts are calling this a tsunami because it really has been a tsunami of cases. We've seen essentially a vertical line with how quickly the cases are going up. So what that means is we have to change our behavior because when the virus moves, we got to move. So the most important thing we got to do right now is to change our behavior. And that includes less parties, Tori. Yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> yeah. And it includes, you know, not getting together, not going out as much, not doing as much indoor dining. But the second thing we have to do, guys, is to change our masks. So for the longest time, we've been using those cloth masks. It's time to get rid of those, get the surgical grade ones or get the KN95s and even think about double masking, as I've said before. Yeah, I heard cloth masks are out. You got to get, you got to upgrade. All right, thanks. Well, the doctor just said that, but I need a Tory <laughs> to make sure to hammer that home. Just so confirming. I'll, confirming. I'll let her, I'll let Doc, let's have Dr. Coley set you up. Yep, yep, uh, yep. Okay, first of all, <laughs> Doc, question for you. Where is your DBL hat? We can usually see it behind you. Yeah, I threw it in a box somewhere when Ooh. I came back into the studio, but I do have to dig it back out, Al, so good point. Okay, <laughs> sounds like that box was the trash. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, why are these, so obviously everybody's freaking out right now. Uh, why are some experts still hopeful despite the recent news of the record-breaking COVID cases? Yeah, you know, we're all tired. It's been so many months of dealing with this, but there is some good news here. So the first is that Omicron we have seen has been incredibly mild, especially in vaccinated and boosted people. Now, I don't want people to believe that they can't get sick from it because we have seen people die with Omicron. But for the large part, it's acting more like a cold and it's a shorter duration of illness is what we're seeing with this infection. And most of our cases, according to the CDC report this morning, are now Omicron across the country. Wow. The second piece of this, Al, is what we saw in South Africa, which is that, you know, there were a bunch of people that were unvaccinated. So Omicron came quickly, spread very quickly, and then they got to herd immunity, and now it's essentially gone. So we don't know how that's going to translate here in the U.S., where a lot of us are vaccinated, but we're hopeful that because it's so contagious, so self-limited, and so short, that we may actually end up getting a wave and, ha and getting over it much more wow. quickly. All right. Doc, first of all, Happy New Year. Good to have you back, even if it's like this virtually. But I do want to ask this question. I want to start a new president, precedent for 2022. Okay, so people want to know when it's safe to return back to work. I want to state it like, Doc, this is early January 2022. As of now, what would your answer be for people to return back to school or work after testing positive for COVID? So in six months from now, they don't attack either of us. <laughs> Happy New Year, Jeff. And I can pretty much guarantee you we're both going to get attacked in six months, regardless of what I say today, you know, because the, the science is going to change. We might be dealing with a different variant. And I think the circumstances of what's going on will change. So so let me be really, really honest about this, guys. What the CDC said last week about going from 10 days to five days is partially supported by science, but it's partially supported by getting people back to work and getting the infrastructure up and running and getting the economy running. So my personal belief, if we're dealing with largely Omicron, which we now are, we weren't a couple of weeks ago, but we now are, which has a shorter lifespan, usually about five to seven days, as opposed to Delta, which is 10 to 14 days, we can get back to work earlier, we can get back to school earlier, but I strongly believe that testing has to be a part of that. And the reason the CDC has not come out and say that so, so far is because 
we don't have enough tests yeah. and they don't want to create a run on the tests. Basically, it's kind of like the situation we were in with the masks, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic when they said, you know, just wear whatever because we don't have enough masks. And that's kind of what they're doing right now. But we're expecting an update from the CDC this afternoon. OK, I have a question about testing because I go to CVS and I will go to anywhere to get a rapid test. Right. Stop bragging. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how accurate are they? I mean, I've been told like a varied amount of accuracy, like make sure you get a PCR. Are the rapid tests accurate enough to be, can I count on that? No, Tori, you cannot. And so I really want you to think about rapid tests for symptomatic people only. So rapid tests are not good for screening tests because they really start to work better when your viral load is high, okay. meaning you have lots of virus around you. If you don't have a lot of symptoms, you may be infected with the low viral load and not declaring those symptoms. It's also interesting because, you know, we're all vaccinated and boosted. We have now learned that rapid tests don't perform as well in people who are vaccinated or boosted. And that's because their immune system turns on before the virus can really get high enough. So you can get a false negative, oh, even if you have a fever and everything like that, because the immune system's kind of keeping the viral load in check so it doesn't show up on those rapid tests. And then the FDA just recently looked at the performance of the rapid test with Omicron, and they said that they're not performing as well as they had for the previous variants. We still think they'll be positive if you're very symptomatic. But I wouldn't use them as a screening test for sure. OK, so PCR really for screening is what you suggest, correct? OK, that's exactly right. Yeah. So you want to make sure that even if a small amount of virus is there, you're not having symptoms, you get the PCR. Now, have you been able to get PCR appointments? Because that is very difficult to come I by. I had to I had to drive all over the state to, to get one. And I just week. scheduled one yesterday just to because there's yeah, a lot going on sure. right yes. now. And I got my You don't for, have to qualify that. Yeah. Well, you do. Yeah. You do. I, there's no reason why I would just get one normally, but I do. We have some circumstances and uh, Friday was the earliest I could get in personally. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to get one just to check up on myself because a lot of this that's going around now with the Omicron doc is like people are asymptomatic. They don't even know if they have it or not. So right. I'm just going to double check myself. That's cool. And really quickly, doc, full disclosure, we spoke yesterday. You've been so helpful in, for all of us. But uh, I just wanted you to kind of tell our audience what you told me because one of my thoughts was like, well, I'm, I took my bo booster, but it's about time. I, it was like 10 weeks ago. I'm going to get another booster. And what did you say to me when I said that? I said, no, you cannot do that, Al, because a lot of people and I have actually, you know, family friends who are not physicians who did this. You're playing with fire. Number one, it's unchartered territory. We don't know getting multiple repeated activations of your immune system, how that's going to affect your body. It may actually end up attacking your own body, creating myocarditis, creating autoimmune conditions. It is currently being studied in Israel, so that's coming. Number two, I'm really hopeful that we get an Omicron or Delta-specific booster mm. sometime in the near future. And so what you don't want to do is get the original booster, which again is going to probably run out after 10 weeks or so, just over and over again. You want to make Make sure that you try to space out each boost as much as possible. And I just so you guys know, I confirm um, what she said. All right, just, oh, if no. you guys All need right. it, just oh, so you're you're a doctor too now, no, Tori? Yeah, I'm a comfort. Dr. Shulman, Dr. Dr. Jackson. Shulman. That's right. We we went to the same medical school. That's Imaginary. Right. Thank you so much, doctor. If you have a question <laughs> you want answered by Dr. Coley, go ahead and write us on social media. You can also email info at dailyblastlive.com. We're a resource for you guys, so reach out. Coming up on DBL, we're sitting down with CNN. Hero of the Year, how her advocacy is changing lives for those experiencing homelessness. Plus, an anti-Asian voicemail leaves a journalist stunned. We will tell you about this reporter's story that's going viral. Closed captioning provided by... Uh, okay, we are uh, on, and Tori, we're talking hey, about um, uh, uh, coming up is the uh, CNN uh, Woman of the Year person, Hero. Oh, my God, she was so cool. And I, I honestly, like last night I was telling, and I don't want to spoil anything for our audience that hasn't seen it yet, I was just recounting for my girlfriend what happened, and I fell apart. You did? And it was, it's so interesting, and she was like, I don't know how you guys hold it together on the panel, and I think there's a weird thing where... I'm so focused on making sure this person's story gets out and it's not about me. Right. That, like, there's the something. Almost like a paramedic would just go into, I, I'm going to do my job and then 
Well, but like, yeah, it's it's a really emotional story, and like, just like how inspirational she is, and like the tragedy, and how she triumphed and turned that into something just so positive that the whole world recognized. Yeah, and, and what I thought was so interesting too is she kept saying, "I I want people to make this clear. I'm not doing this to heal." And this is important for any of you out there that are like really suffering right now. She didn't go and do this work that you're about to see to heal her pain. She specifically repeated the words, I'm doing this to find a purpose for my pain. And that tiny shift and reframing of your grief can make you from an inactive person into someone who gets up in the morning. Absolutely. Do you know what my, I mean? That my, little um, shift Well, you is know, big. I was, uh, I, my, my cousin, Elisa, passed away from breast, breast cancer, cancer yeah. a couple months back now. And, uh, you know, we had our memorial service in Cleveland uh, maybe, oh, maybe about a month ago. And I was talking to her sister, who is now a power lifter. Wow. And because when her sister was going through that, she started, so I mean, like, clean and jerks and, like, wow. big weight. But it's just like, you know, because I know she looked like she was in great shape. She found a but purpose. But she started working out with heavy weights to transfer that pain, pain. somewhere wow. else. Because if you just sit with it, it'll eat you up. It you know? will. It will. 20 seconds. Welcome back to DBL. All right, we got to talk about this. It's so interesting. A journalist on our sister station, KSDK in St. Louis, has gone viral. Now, it's all over this segment she did on a New Year's tradition and foods that people eat. You'd think it's kind of like safe and easy, right? She made a comment about dumpling soup. Take a look. So we've got a list of what's included in a traditional first day of the year meal. And these foods are said to bring good health, wealth, and luck. Grains actually symbolize wealth. We can guess why. I ate dumpling soup. That's what a lot of Korean people do. So, okay, cool. Now in response, the anchor, Michelle Lee, received a voicemail from a viewer that complained about her being, quote, very Asian. So Michelle posted a video to Instagram playing the entire woman's voicemail. Now I'm going to read it, but no, this isn't coming from me. This is from the voicemail. The woman said, quote, your Asian anchor mentioned something about being Asian and Asian people eat dumplings on New Year's Day. I don't think it was very appropriate that she said that and she was being very Asian. She can keep her Korean to herself because if a white person would say that they would get fired. End quote. Michelle's Instagram response. White people can't what? admit to eating dumplings. <laughs> I love dumplings. Let's get to the bottom of this, Jeff. If you had a dumpling, <laughs> say it. <laughs> I'm racist. I ate a couple oh, dumplings. I ate some is. dumplings. He is. <laughs> you went, uh, the response went viral, and the hashtag very Asian was trending last night. Now, Michelle had this to say about the entire thing. Take a look at her response. I am an American. I am Asian. My friends eating noodles for longevity or dumplings for prosperity are also American. And Americans get to define America. And a lot of people feel the same way. Millions, apparently. The hashtag very Asian has been trending globally. Okay, what do we think of this? And let's expand it into a real conversation. If a white person said this is what white people eat, would they be fired? What are you shaking your head? Tell no, me. No, no. This is getting ridiculous. And I, yeah. I don't want to start 2022 like this. Michelle, I'll come up for dumplings anytime you want. My favorite thing about this planet that we live on is the culture that differentiates all of us. Right. That's my favorite thing. Travel is my favorite thing to do in this whole world and experience other people's cultures, tradition, to hear about what you'd like. What was it like for you, Al, growing up? Was it different than mine? I find that fascinating. To take someone from Bellevue Mental hospital and they get their one phone call and they call the station to complain about something that's white and make it racist is insane to me. It's insane. No normal logical person thinks that way. This is one crazy person that belongs in a mental institution and now we're making light of that and now we're pinning our races against each other and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Okay, we're assuming you're kidding about the mental institution. We aren't clear that that person is obviously well, if, you don't think, if you think I'm serious about the mental institution, you have a problem as well. <laughs> Okay, I have to say allegedly after everything I say, allegedly they called from Bellevue Mental Institution. Okay. Is there a yeah. difference between her saying it and a white person saying it? Is that fair to even say? Am I being too 
Bellevue. No, I, and, and this is the conversation that I never want to have. And it's, it's a myopic conversation that's going to go nowhere. Of course, white people can talk about dumplings or foods that they traditionally grew up with. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. We have dumplings too, but we have a, a, a huge uh, a, a population there that eats pierogies. Is that German? Polish. Polish, yes. So it has the dumplings. Right. Great pasta with fun stuff inside. A lot of people around the world have figured it out. I think what this, what the reason she highlighted this is because unfortunately, Jeff, it's not just one person. I've, I've listened to female uh, journalists talk about the death threats, the rape threats, the things that go on every day. And it's so insane to you that you cannot wrap your head around it, nor can I. But I'm sure when you check your DMs, you're ugly, you're this, you're Jewish, you're a woman, you shouldn't be talking, all these things. But why and highlight those people is what I'm saying. Right. Why highlight them? Why let them run your network jeopardy when you're hiring different hosts? Why are we giving credibility to any of this? Why are we letting them write in? Why are we listening to them? Why are we highlighting that voicemail? We should be highlighting Michelle Lee yeah. and her traditions and what she does and what a great journalist she is. That's what we should be highlighting. Not people who don't have a voice, who don't do anything all day, and I'm being cut off for the best. Mm -hmm. For the best, I for need to best. be cut Can't off. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Pierogies are delicious. They we'll are. Be right back. <laughs> I've never. The Biden administration is issuing a stark warning about the dangers of the Omicron variant. If you're not fully vaccinated, you have good reason to be concerned. At the same time, there are claims like these tweets sent to thousands of followers that Omicron only causes mild symptoms. So let's verify. Are Omicron symptoms always mild? Our sources are the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the COVID-19 Advisory for Ontario, Canada. Many of the statements around the severity of Omicron are based on early data from South African researchers who first discovered Omicron last month and the variant is just now starting to take hold in the U.S. However, the CDC says more data is needed to understand the severity of Omicron, especially in people who are fully vaccinated. The WHO agrees it's too early to make conclusions. We do have initial reports that suggest that Omicron is less severe compared to Delta. However, if again, if we have more cases, more cases mean more hospitalizations, and if a healthcare system is overburdened, people will die because they won't get the appropriate care that they need. The WHO adds, even if many cases are milder, as the early data suggests, Omicron is more transmissible than previous variants and vaccines are less effective against it. This increases the odds it will affect someone who will struggle to recover. We do know that people with Omicron can have the full spectrum of disease. Everything from asymptomatic infection, mild infection, people needing hospitalization, and people have died from Omicron. Canadian health officials agree. That's not sniffles. Uh, that is hospitalization, uh, which is a very serious health outcome. So it's false that Omicron symptoms are always mild. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back to DBL. It's estimated that 8,000 people are experiencing homelessness on Skid Row. Now, earlier, we spoke with the 2021 CNN Hero of the Year, Shirley Rains. She is bringing awareness to the epidemic of homelessness, as well as making a certain impact on the community. Take a look. Shirley, what an honor to have you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> this is such an honor. You are absolutely making change. Not many people can say that. Uh, you were going through a very, I, I read a lot about you and um, the trauma that you've experienced. For instance, you were going through a very dark time leading up to starting your nonprofit. I want our viewers to hear from it because I know a lot of our viewers um, just over the last couple of years with the pandemic and losing loved ones and losing children, perhaps they can be inspired by you. Can you share your story with them? You know, when I was in my 20s, um, my son, we were having a hard time, me and my ex-husband, we were living at a hotel, the hotel didn't have our stuff together. Um, I was six months pregnant with my oldest daughter and I felt like my son should have a backyard to play in. So, you know, I sent him to his great grandmother's house to play. And unfortunately, somehow she was careless with some medication. He got into it. Um, when I went to pick him up, he wasn't acting right. I'm the one that actually walked him into the hospital. Mm. 
Um, but at that moment, I knew my heart just sank. I knew it was too late. Everything in me was just saying, uh, you got to say everything you can right now at this moment. So, you know, gave him permission to lay his head on my shoulder, walked him in, and I walked out without him. I can't imagine. Oh, my God. I know. Uh -huh. Wow. I mean, the, the the fact that you are able to speak about that mm -hmm. so eloquently is, uh, uh, I, I don't know how you're able to do that, but I commend your your courage and uh, you getting your story out here. And so we're gonna help you get that story out there. So let's talk about this. A few weeks uh, of feeding people that were experiencing homelessness, you started to re, uh, receive compliments about your appearance, which I was going to do. Yes, me yeah. too. <laughs> right, right. Please tell us, how did this whole thing lead to you starting your organization? You know, when I went out there to feed the homeless, again, I was looking for a purpose for my pain. I was looking for an outlet. I think um, when you guys had said, you know, maybe there's a lot I can share. People have lost loved ones during the pandemic. I definitely know how it feels to be broken. You know what I mean? And I went out there. I think the most important thing is I didn't go out there to heal myself. I went out there to find a purpose for my pain. I know this pain I'm going through will never go away. But if I have a purpose for it, if there's something I can do with it, then maybe that will help me. Mm -hmm. And when I went out there to the streets to feed and give all the essentials, the women, the trans community, everybody was more interested in my hair, my makeup, my earrings, my <laughs> eyelashes. And you know, I get it. Life is so messed up. And sometimes we just want to play an adult game of make-believe. So do they hair? Do they eyelashes? You know, give them a little love, give them a little food, you know, stuff that was done to me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, it's, and that's not hero mentality. Let's be very clear. That's human mentality. Right. And so that's kind of how it started. And the world started looking and people were interested. And I'm like, okay, it's not that big of a deal. We just loving up on people, but yeah. you know. Then giving them their dignity back, my right. friend. Beauty to the streets is called. It's now a two day operation. On Tuesdays, you provide meals. Tell me about Saturdays though. What happens on Saturdays? Saturdays is the biggest day. I have Fighters for the World MC that comes out and my team comes out and we provide food for 500 people. We hire a caterer. We are fully funded by social media. When I mean fully, I mean Instagram, TikTok and Twitter for six years. We've kept this going because of social media. And it means so much to me because social media, you know, could, it, it gets a tainted name, but there are good people out there that want to do good things. You know what I mean? And we are fully funded by these people. So everything that they need, it's the wants and the needs. I think when it comes to caring for the homeless, a lot of people are like, they need socks, they need this. But what about the wants? What about wanting to have right. their hair washed? Yeah. Wanting to look in the mirror and feel good about yourself. So we do hair, makeup, eyelashes, uh, ice cream, clothing, uh, wigs, men get barber services. It's like an outdoor mall where all your needs and wants can be met. And some people just sit around and listen to music. It's that time where people recognize them. You know, Monday through Friday, it's get out the way. Saturday is come here. We've done this all for you. Wow. What would you like? Wow. You Shirley, know what I mean? Shirley, it's so fitting to have you on the first day of the new year because yes. for humanity, if you are our first guest, we're just going up in 2022, Amen. and we need that. Amen. And you are rightfully so named the 2021 CNN Hero of the Year. What does it feel like to be recognized with such an award? I still feel like I'm kind of floating on air. I do want to be very clear again. I don't see anything that we do as as hero behavior. What I was looking for was that found that funding for our social media family. You know, for from our social media family to the to the community of Skid Row. What I was looking for was um, a way to get what we do out there so we can get more people helping us, helping us with blankets, tents, and sleeping bags. It wasn't about the title. It was about the resources that can come to the community. So am I happy about winning CNN Hero of the Year? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing what 2022 brings to this community with the resources since our name is out there. As far as me, child, I ain't no hero. I got a lot going on. Wow. <laughs> which is you makes you, which exactly, exactly yeah. why That's it is. That's why. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You are a true gift. And to all of our viewers out there, I know that you're going to want to help Shirley. So to make a donation and to learn more about Beauty to the Streets, you can visit beautytothestreets.org. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by across social media are sharing their tips and tricks to combat the effects of alcohol for those who may have drank a little bit too much. But like this tweet suggests, people claim that there's one cause of bad hangovers that we can't control getting older. But is that true? Let's verify. We went to these sources for an answer. 
the liver is the main detoxifier in the body, and liver enzymes help us break down alcohol. Emmanuel Amenke, who studies internal medicine at UCLA Medical Center, says the older we get, the less efficient enzyme production is. So it takes longer for our bodies to sort through the effects of heavy drinking in comparison to when we were younger. So if a 25-year-old person and a 55-year-old person were to drink three margaritas with the same alcohol content at the same place, who would feel the sting more? Amenike says more than likely it would be the 55-year-old. The reason being that the younger person has organs that are uh, more efficient, has blood flow that is uh, understandably uh, faster and reaches more areas and also has the ability to uh, have his tissues, which are more sensitive, clear the toxin uh, much faster than the older person. But according to Jesus Chaveria, a researcher at the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, there is no one-size-fits-all explanation to understanding hangovers. We know that uh, one of the biggest predictors of hangover isn't even the level of intoxication you are. It's the level of subjective intoxication. What some research has found is that no matter how much you drink, if you drink more than your usual amount, your, your um, likelihood of experiencing a hangover and the severity of it goes up. He says studies on the impact and direct causes of hangovers are still developing and more research is needed to draw conclusions. Melissa Majumeter, a registered dietitian and nutritionist based out of Atlanta, agrees that there are more factors at play than just age and liver metabolism, like proper sleep. Studies from Harvard University and the Mayo Clinic say dehydration also plays a big role. So we can verify the claim that hangovers get worse with age, well, it needs context. Age definitely plays a factor, but there are multiple reasons why people can feel hungover. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. How can you make your new workout routine stick according to science? Let's connect the dots. A massive study across 15 different universities looked at what it takes to make people who are already gym members actually go on a regular basis. And experts found the first step is to plan ahead. People were way more likely to work out if they set a date and time with their gym instead of just showing up whenever they felt like it. That strategy was even more effective when they were sent reminders. A gentle nudge via text or email made people way more likely to show up and start sweating, especially if they skipped their last workout. The study also found that a little reward goes a long way. Gyms that awarded points for working out or gave small cash rewards saw big spikes in attendance. But you may be asking, what if I work out at home? Experts say you still apply this method to reach your 2022 fitness goals. Just make sure to plan ahead, set reminders, and reward yourself when you follow through. And that's Connecting the Dots. Welcome back. I just was watching the CNN's Hero of the Year, Shirley Rains, and I have to say some social media when they give like that can be wonderful. DBL is every day new. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. I messed it up, all right? Bye! <laughs>